Hey everyone, welcome to a new Flutter tutorial and today I am going to, going to explain to you about the block pattern used in Flutter. So before starting this tutorial, make sure that you know the basics of Dart, Flutter and you must have set up Flutter on your system so that it will be easier to understand the concept that I am going to tell you in this video. I am going to use the block pattern and explain to you why we use a block pattern, how we should use it and uh, why is it good from the other patterns for your project and let's start the tutorial by making a new Flutter project. So I am going to make a new Flutter project, click on next and I am going to name this block pattern demo click on next and then click on finish so this will take a minute to create the flutter project so i'm using the android studio for developing my flutter apps uh, usually the developers use vs code to develop the flutter apps it's up to you it's up to the developers it's up to the preference it's up to their uh, comfort which id they like so i i am comfortable with the android studio that's why i'm using the android, android studio id so uh, this is the basic project that is created when you first create a flutter project so this is a default code that appears in the home page class and uh, i have the devices installed of pixel 3 and pixel 3 xl to test my applications and this is the android studio id so uh, you can run the app from this play button so this is the main dart file and uh, this is the default code that you get when you create a new project and uh, here uh, you, as you can see there is a raised button on the bottom and when you click the button a number of times the increment counter displays and updates the particular value of the increment counter. The code of this particular UI and the calculation of the increment counter is being done off in the main dart file currently. When a user or when a developer uh, is working on a big project and the UI is very complex or and he is also calling the service from the same class he has to search for that particular uh, method or that class in that in that Dart file and that will make things very time consuming and very difficult for the developer so that's where the block pattern comes in and uh, the full form of block pattern is business logic component where all the business logic is divided and is done in the block class and uh, only the ui part comes into the main file the ui part is separated from the block class in this flutter project as you can see there's a pubspec.yaml file here you need to pass all the dependencies that you are using in your project so here are the dependencies and here and there are also dev dependencies all the fonts or images that you want to add to your application all of that needs to be in this class and then you need to click on this packages get or you can also run a command in your terminal which is pub get and you can include that particular library into your project and uh, use use it in your class by importing it on the top of your dart file in whichever class you want to use that particular library so let me create a ui i will show you the example of block pattern by creating a dummy login ui and separating the validations from the UI class and uh, I will use a stream controller and I will update the validations uh, whenever there's an error or there's a change in the text field so I will use a block pattern for the login page and I will update the validation first let's make the login UI so I'll fast forward this part and you can go through the code as well
so I have written this uh, code and I have created the UI now and uh, so I have used a uh, form and uh, for the form uh, and in the form I have used a stream builder which has a child as text form field for the login and the for the email and the password and al also I have uh, made the stream builder as a parent widget for the raised button so and in order to disable the button and enable the button I am using a stream builder and uh, only the UI part is handled here and all the validations and all the check is being done in the block class so this is the block that I have created so in this block uh, login block class uh, I have made two uh, behavior subjects which are email and password which will update the login button as per the current validation when the user is typing in the email fields and the password fields I have made two behavior subjects that will update the login button instantly when the user is typing into the email and the password fields then I have created two streams of string type that will uh, transform that will transform the email stream and uh, validate the email from the login validator class which is which is this class so this is the login validator class uh, which has a stream transformer and it is handling the validation and it is validating the email from the helper class which I have, which I have created so and all I have I have uh, done all the checks that if, if the email is empty I am returning null and adding error to it and if the is valid email uh, check uh, returns an error then from the helper class then uh, I am then also I am adding an invalid invalid email id if all the cases are passed then I am adding value to the sync and uh, this is returning the value to the uh, email stream on the login block uh, and in the helper class uh, I have uh, passed the rejects for uh, the password and the email and on the basis of this rejects the login button will be updated accordingly when this is when this rejects matches then the validation will be returned as true and uh, the login button uh, will get enabled so I am uh, syncing in the value from the login validator and the output is getting streamed out in the stream builder here so all the as you can see all the validation part and all the handling part has been done in the block class so I am just, I'm just streaming out the uh, uh, value into the stream builder so when you uh, go to the definition of stream builder so this is a constant so stream builder uh, ensures that the first frame will show useful data and otherwise the first frame, the first frame will be built with the value null so let me run the project to show you all how it is working uh, in the simulator if the snapshot is empty uh, it will return null else it will uh, call the login function so in the login method I am uh, checking for the current state if everything is fine then uh, then I will call the service from the login method that I have created in the block class the service call will be done everything will be done in the block itself so when you go to the login method uh, so to the to that particular method I am passing the email controller text and the pa password controller text uh, both the values that are being uh, feeded in by the user and, uh, and uh, the validations are matched then the service will be called in this method so I am not calling the service in this project because this is a demo project so I have just written a print just to ensure that this is working fine so the app is running and uh, let me uh, run the app again in debug mode so that it will be easier to explain how exactly is it working let me mark the debuggers so that it will be easier to understand how exactly is the code working so the app is running and let me enter some invalid email it matches the rejects of the password it is syncing in the value it is then uh, streaming out the value to the password field so as you can see the cases have matched it has gone through all the conditions and it has finally entered the else condition 
so now it will sync in the value and, and stream it out in the email stream builder so i've disabled the debugging so right now the button button is disabled it is gray in color let me enter a valid email id okay so i have valid entered a valid email id and now let me enter a password which which is also a valid password according to my regex that i have passed so as you can see the button is as is enabled and if now i click on it and it has validated the current state so it uh, it will uh, call the uh, login method in the block class there will be a text printed on the push of this button so as you can see uh, it is calling the login method in the block class and uh, it is successfully printing the service called statement which i had uh, printed here so this means that the, all the validations are working fine and it has been handled in the block class and only the ui part is being developed in the main class so for hiding this password you need to make a property which is obscure text to true and the ui will be reloaded because i have saved it and i will again enter the email and now when i will enter the password it will be hidden and it is working fine so thank you for watching this tutorial everyone i hope you like it i hope it, this is helpful for you all of you and happy coding and do subscribe to the channel of dlt labs